Hello, my name is Julia and I am a combustion engineer at Ratcliffe Power Station. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about women in engineering and sort of my career aspirations and how I got into engineering. So essentially why, why did I go into engineering? Um, I've always been really interested in sort of numbers, problem solving and sort of the math side of things. Um, and then during my A-levels I decided to take design and technology and I kind of fell in love with being able to design and make things and sort of solve problems with actual products. Um, so I sort of chose uh, engineering as an industry sort of sector to look into and then um, doing a little bit more research into different universities and different degrees I ended up um, really liking the sound of chemical engineering um, mainly because I was really enjoying my chemistry at the time um, but also because it had a bit of a more a wider application than just doing a chemistry degree. Because this is about being a uh, women in engineering, um, I've been asked to talk about a couple of different things. So, for example, did you experience any peer pressure from friends or from career advisors to go into a girls subject? Um, I think I was quite lucky because, for one, I went to an all girls school, so there really wasn't, you know, direct competition from um, male uh, students and. Uh, secondly, because I went to a school that became a special engineering school, sort of towards the latter end of my time there, um, this kind of meant that all of a sudden I was quite, in, well, it was highlighted to me that there's this whole other industry of engineering that I hadn't really heard about, sort of doing the normal maths, English, science subjects. Um, and when I started looking a bit more into it, um, I had a lot of help from our career advisors to kind of go down the different routes, mechanical, uh, civil, chemical, that I eventually ended up choosing. Um, and that was mainly because my chemistry teacher was actually a chemical engineer. So I personally didn't have any peer pressure to go into a girl's subject. I think I had lots of different options sort of laid out in front of me. Um, I wasn't a very good essay writer. I wasn't that creative in regards to sort of art and music um, side of things, but in regards to making things and creating things that way, I also had those kind of tendencies. So no, I never really felt peer pressure to do anything other than what I wanted to do. Um, and in general, just what I was good at, which was um, really great about, that was something really great about my school and the people that worked there. So I've also been asked to talk about sort of my career aspirations and what my dream job would be. Um, sort of going into chemical engineering from sort of year one at university, you're kind of not pushed, but a lot of the opportunities out there are within the oil and gas industry. Um, and for me, it wasn't really, it, it didn't really appeal. Uh, I was someone that was very aware of the sort of carbon footprint that the human population is leaving on the world. Um, the UK is very advanced and so there was lots of sort of at, at the time when I was looking at sort of opportunities for a, a year in industry there was a there was a big push for renewable energy and carbon capture and I actually ended up um, looking into a placement at E.ON um, to just work in carbon capture um, and so for me it, that really appealed because it even if you're doing very small amount of work in that area you kind of feel like you're at least making a difference and you're contributing to the technological output at the end um, so for me my career aspiration and my dream job was to just sort of get into that industry be a renewable energy engineer and you know help help the uk stop emitting co2 to the atmosphere um, where i've ended up is working at Ratcliffe Power Station, which is a coal power station. But my role is to make this power station more efficient, which at the end of the day will reduce the carbon footprint. And because of the way that the government has, um, has decided to make things work in the UK in terms of the energy supply, Ratcliffe will eventually close. And at some point, this site will be redeveloped into something more sustainable for the future. And I would really like to be a part of that. So for me, my dream job would be either uh, heading up or working with people on site here to make this place more sustainable for the future. 
So the next kind of two sections that I've been asked to sort of my opinion on was um, what attracted me to the energy industry. And I sort of already highlighted that. It's, it's one of the only commodities that for the moment can't be stored. So every day is sort of a challenge in terms of where does the energy come from? What makes it? What is that makeup going to be? Especially in the UK, because we have such uh, a broad variation of inputs into the grid. Um, so, yeah, for me, that was what made me attracted me to it. It's, it's a really tough industry to be in at the moment because um, we've got lots of problems, but it also makes it really exciting and really challenging, which has always been something I've looked for in a career. Um, and secondly, the um, second part of that question was sort of would I recommend the engineering academy on site here um, within Ratcliffe's sort of bounds? The other aspiring engineers and def I would definitely recommend it it's a, it's a place where you can sort of go and learn lots of different skills in a very short amount of time and get qualifications that you might not be able to get anywhere else it's a great sort of um, opportunity to get involved in the energy industry and they'll have so many links and contacts for you to move about the UK or abroad and just go into whatever you particularly wanted to go into so the last part to this video blog is to um, sort of give my top tips to any young women who are considering a career in engineering. Um, and I've really got two main ones, which are one to just not consider yourself any different, because as soon as you start considering yourself to be different, um, there's no reason why other people are going to start thinking the same thing. And you've got the exact same skill set as the person sitting next to you who is also an engineer, um, regardless of their gender and yours. My second tip is um, to just be really open minded um, and try and take the initiative as much as you can. Um, there are lots and lots of engineering roles that will be really heavily male dominated, um, but that's just historical. Um, that's got nothing to do with your ability to carry out your role. Um, and what I've actually found is that the more you get involved and the more you go out and talk to people, um, the, the quicker you learn and the quicker um, you know, things can be accepted and uh, you can challenge the old ways of thinking. Um, but in general, you know, just... Just take every opportunity as it comes, go and talk to as many people as you can, um, and a lot of the industry will surprise you. So that's sort of the end of the questions and sort of the interview part. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, and if anyone's got any specific questions about um, being an engineer at a power station, being a woman engineer at a power station, or just being a woman in engineering, feel free to get in contact with me. Thank you.